Hey, what's up everyone? JG, Gars Gang Adventures. As always, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five things that I really, really like about our new 2023 Can-Am Maverick X3. But to keep things as fair and balanced as possible, we're also gonna be talking about five things that I really, really don't like, because there's definitely a handful of those. And to be fair to Can-Am, um, honestly, the things that I don't like aren't that big of a deal, but they're definitely still things that could have been engineered better, could have been designed better. And even if they didn't get it 100% wrong, they could have just done better. And for the amount of money that we're paying for these machines, I really you know, would hope that in the future they decide to. But with that being said, let's get right into the video and let's start talking about these things. Five things I like, five things I don't like. Let's do it. So to start our list off, we're going to start with the likes. And the first thing that I'm going to come up with for the list of likes is definitely going to be your price point and the value that you get from that. But before I get into it, I really feel like I need to explain. Um, you know, like everyone, I really feel like these machines are overpriced. I do wish they're priced lower, and I'm sure we all do. But this isn't a Can-Am thing, it's a market thing. Honda, Polaris, Yamaha, Honda, all of them are overpriced. So the reason it still ended up on the like list is because when you really look at the MSRP on one of these things, which right now, for an X3 DS Turbo, you're sitting at 21599 And when you look at that and what you're getting for that, it's the best bang for your buck for sure. Uh, I invite you guys, compare it against the market, you know, see what, what else you're getting for $21,599. It's a good value, and for that reason, it's going to make the list. It's kind of interesting because I think Can-Am for a while was priced a little bit higher, but the way Polaris has kind of kept, kept uh, up in their game and making their machines more and more expensive, now Can-Am's really starting to shine, and I'm all for it. Moving on, the next thing on the like list is going to be the interior layout or what I like to call the cockpit. I call it that because once you're sitting in it, that's exactly what it feels like. Just to show you, there's the cockpit. Uh, Can-Am really did a good job on the design and layout. It's well thought out and it's definitely confidence inspiring. I like it, therefore it makes it to the like list. Number three on the list of likes is gonna be the four wheel drive system. The Smart Lock performs extremely well. We put it through some pretty gnarly climbs and mud holes and it's yet to disappoint. I can feel the front differential engage, which is very different from the i4 wheel drive on the Honda Talon. Uh, the i4 wheel drive applies brakes to the tires that sense slipping, which is a story for an entirely different video, but I haven't been super happy with it. In comparison to the Can-Am, that Smart Lock, I can feel it engage. I, I like it. I feel like confident in using it. I like it. I really, really do. Moving on, number four on the list of likes is gonna be the stock tires. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna go out there and upgrade the tires anyway, but for us, these 30 inch Maxxis carnivores will suit us well. I'm a fan of the Carnies. They're not really great at anything, but they're pretty good at a lot of things, if that makes sense. We also have 32 inch carnivores on the Talon, so we had that way before we had the Can-Am. It's kind of just what we ended up with. And like I said, even though they're not great at one singular thing, they, they are good good at a lot of things and I think when you're trying to spend tires you're going to end up in a bunch of different environments so maybe you're trying to find something that fits that bill the carnies do and to get it in stock form what more could you ask for the last thing on the list is going to have to be the aggressive styling now to me I don't know what it is about these Can-Am machines, but they just look mean. I really feel like Can-Am did a really great job of design and layout of the overall machine. It's just super, super aggressive. It looks mean. It's one of those machines when you look at it, you're like, wow, that's cool. 
So when I'm spending this kind of money on something, I definitely want those looks. Um, the Talon, I don't know if it has or not, but it has reliability, which we'll see. So that wraps up the five things I really, really like. That's just my list. Your list might be different. And if you think we forgot anything, like I said, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Now, we gotta talk about the five things that I don't like. Number one on that list is definitely gonna be the engine and the clutch noises. This thing's noisy, and it's not just the engine and clutch noises, to be honest, it's squeaky. And yes, everything is properly greased. I don't know what it is, it's just squeaky. My old Razor was like that and it is what it is and honestly it's gotten to the point where it kind of doesn't bother me anymore. But I do notice it every time I jump back into the Talon because I, all those squeaks and those same little rattles and stuff, they're just not there on the Talon. So when I spend some time and you know behind the wheel of that thing and then I get back into the Can-Am, it all just shows its ugly face again about how noisy it is, whatever. Moving on, next thing on our list of dislikes is definitely gonna be the seating position. Can-Am did somewhat consider this and gave you an adjustment. Let me see if I could show you guys that. Um, there definitely is an adjustment in the front, so then that way you can improve the angle of the seat to get a better view. But the reality of the matter is it's just not enough. Now, this can be solved with a set of aftermarket seat risers, which we'll do, but still, it doesn't come that way from the factory, so it's making the list. Next up on the dislike list is going to be the rear view while you're in the machine. Now, I'm not gonna get in the machine to really show you it. I'm just gonna stress how much it sucks. <laughs> I can't see crap. Honestly, I just can't. And I'll give you the cockpit view just so you see that. But we even added a set of aftermarket Kimimoto mirrors. And while that does help of kind of keeping an eye on traffic behind you as you're riding, it definitely doesn't help you while you're backing up. Backup view just sucks. It's largely to do with the actual physical size of that back window, I guess you could call it. You just can't see anything. And especially the way you're sitting down in those seats, you, you can't see crap. Now I did solve this with a 12 volt Wi-Fi camera. This uh, displays a Wi-Fi signal that links to our tab tablet, which is up in the front, which gives me a nice view of the back. I could see everything, but because it didn't come that way from the factory, I don't necessarily expect them to put cameras, but they could have improved their sight lines. I'm going to add it to the list. All right. So for the fourth dislike, we're actually going to circle back to the seats. And the reason we're going to do that is this is my seat removal process. Now, honestly, I really, really, really dislike the removal process, especially when you compare it to the competitors. There's a total of four bolts, two in the back, two in the front. They need to be removed. And although it's not hard at all, it does require some tools. And they could really, they just could have made it easier. You're gonna need to remove the seats to get to the battery or to do any kind of thorough cleaning as well as wiring your accessories. Again, it's not hard, but, I just feel like they could have designed it better. Um, the fact that I need tools really kind of makes sure that when I'm out on the trails, I need to make sure I have those tools with me because if the battery were to die, I can't even jump my battery. Um, it would have just been better for an easy access. Not that big of a deal, but it still makes my list. So the last thing I don't on my do not like list is definitely gonna be the quality of the body panels and the pens used to hold them on. I can't stress enough about how cheap and thin they are. This isn't really a huge deal, considering you're not gonna be removing your body panels all the time, but trust me, when you do, you'll have some very choice words for Can-Am and their design team, at least I did. So that's it, guys. That wraps up our list of five things I love and five things I don't love about our new 2023 Can-Am Maverick X3 DS Turbo. Honestly, overall, it's a great machine. The pros far outweigh the cons, and I'd buy this machine again in a heartbeat. I really would. If you guys enjoyed the content, or if you just wanna watch us keep building this thing, please consider liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. It really helps us, and we definitely appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, see you later, guys.